are removed from your ghettos of Warsaw and Krakow. You are removed from your ghettos, white Jew. But these, the sons and daughters of Africa, we are still in the ghettos of white America to this very day that we sit here tonight. This is the ugly face of black nationalism in America. No Jew on the face of the planet Earth can say that you were robbed of your name, your language, your religion, your culture, your God, your folkways, your mores, your norms. If you do, you are a damn liar. And as Jesus said, the truth is not in you. You make me sick. A violent anti-Semitism, the causes of which are understood only by disciples. The only reason we speak upon the Jewish community or elements thereof is their relationship to our suffering. But why single out one group from the white community, especially one that suffered already so terribly? We contend that the Jewish Talmud, which was practiced yesterday and today, caused more murders of Africans than all of the gas chambers in Nazi Germany. The type of anti-Semitism that he is preaching now is the type of anti-Semitism that was preached by Hitler in the 1930s in Germany. Norman Rosenbaum knows the results of this sort of hate-mongering. His brother Jenkel was beaten and stabbed to death during the anti-Jewish rioting in Brooklyn in 1991. Hello, Washington, Merlin, over Virginia. We're Washington. <laughs> Rosenbaum is on a mission to get the U.S. Attorney General to reopen the case against his brother's alleged murderers. You don't have an appointment with the President, Norman. They're not going to give it to you. At least they rang back this time. Australian that gets killed in the United States doesn't get the attention. But maybe the best, best form of defense is offense. You got nothing to lose. You're here. Yes, the purpose of your visit today. Khalid Mohammed is in Washington on a mission of his own. He's considered by many Jews to be one of the most dangerous men in America. So his well-publicized decision to tour the city's Holocaust Museum was met with justified suspicion. He is so bigoted that you can't possibly change his mind. So no matter what you say, he's still going to say that. Well, because even, if, even if it's... They did suffer, but you can't blame the people today that never were over here. They were in Europe during the time there was slavery here. You can't blame them for the slavery here. But in the end, they let him in. Just from the end. Norman Rosenbaum's passion for justice has made him friends in high places. In the US Congress, he's lobbied extensively to get powerful voices behind his push to Hi. reopen the books on you? his brother's murder. Norman. Hi, how are you? How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. How's your family? Some, like New York Republican Senator Al D'Amato, no doubt have good political reasons for keeping the Jewish lobby on side. You know me, quite and unassuming. <laughs> but the access this Australian gets here is also due in part to fears of racial conflagration. The man who's fanning those flames came out of the Holocaust Museum unabashed and apparently unmoved to deliver his pre-prepared speech to the waiting cameras. As we toured the Jewish Holocaust Memorial, we thought of how out of the German people the so-called Jews were given a Schindler's list. But out of the white man of America and the European nations, the Jews and Arabs who participated in the black or the African Holocaust, we were given a Swindler's list. We have a duty also to let the world know that there was another Holocaust which gives its truest definition, the black Holocaust. Surely it just denigrates your own case to turn hatred on the Jews. White Christians, the 
Catholics have all admitted their role in our oppression, but the ones who have consistently denied and kept secret their role was the Jewish people. Now the secret relationship is being uh, revealed. <laughs> Just over the Brooklyn Bridge from Manhattan is the neighbourhood of Crown Heights. And here, the relationship between blacks and Jews is no secret. Crown Heights became an integrated community. And it's probably the only truly integrated community in the United States, where you actually have black people and white people, and not just white people, but Hasidic Jews, living side by side in the same community. Now, we always thought that Crown Heights was a model community for that reason. August 91 shattered that belief that we had and shattered that feeling that we had. It, sh it was a shame, of course, that such a thing had to happen. It was that summer that festering animosity erupted into three days of anti-Jewish rioting. The riot was triggered by a car accident involving the motorcade of the chief rabbi. The accident killed the child, Gavin Cater, and critically injured his cousin, Angela. Jews here describe the vengeful rioting that followed as a pogrom. When we were out there on the streets and we saw raised fists in an organized fashion screaming, Heil Hitler, kill the Jews, these weren't local kids from the community. These were professional troublemakers who had come to this community and they were using um, this refrain, Heil Hitler killed the Jews. They yell about being abused, but uh, they were well protected. They were well protected. The Labavitcher Hasidics have come in to this area not to be just part of the community, but to take over and push out. Dr. Vernon Cave lives in the heart of Crown Heights with mostly Jewish neighbors. In 1991, he saw the rioters from his front yard. And as soon as I saw them running down, I ret retreated because uh, I wasn't going to be the part of any uh, conflict of any kind. He believes the anger had been building up for years as the Hasidic community took root and grew here. The doctor's a good man. He says he has Jewish friends, but he can't help himself thinking there's a conspiracy going on here. From my perspective, that's, that is correct. And I would say that anybody who looked at the whole thing would end up with the same uh, uh, conclusion. So are you saying that you believe that some blacks have been forced out of their homes and their businesses in Crown Heights? They certainly have. They have been forced out. Uh, first forced out primarily with uh, the power of money. Uh, they will call you up. They will knock on your door. They... Uh, and ask you if you want to buy, sell your house, and they'll guarantee you all cash. Crown Heights' main synagogue is the hub of the Orthodox Lubavitcher community. You can come in at four o'clock in the morning, you'll find people here. Yeah. Um, you'll see the people come in, they chat, say hello, they then go and pray, others go straight to prayer. Here in the men's section is the most concrete example of the religious traditions that bind these people together. One of the things that's obvious about this community, and you've noted it yourself, is that it takes pride in being different. Is it their distinctiveness that's made them a target? It's, it's not so much their um, physical appearance and their identity per se which makes them a target. If anything, it's the envy and jealousy, for example, um, it's a community which shows initiative. It doesn't wait for the city to um, react to unemployment and welfare um, problems and issues. They do it themselves. What I try to show my people to learn from the Hasidic community, how can 20,000 people take in a community that's over 100,000 uh, strong and have the sort of uh, economic, social 
and political power. I want to learn from that. Discipline of the mind is the basic ingredients of general morality and therefore of spiritual strength. Discipline of the mind Richard Green's community school in Crown Heights runs directly counter to the religious and racial intolerance that lie at the heart of the community's problems. We never knew of each other. We never knew of all the common points of interest. And that is what happened to bring people at this juncture. Whoever the radical voices in our culture get the, the media, get the medium of the media to come out and hear what they have to say, um, or under the skies of the First Amendment. But a great Supreme Court Justice, Louis Brandeis, once said, that the First Amendment is fine and well as long as you don't go and yell fire in a crowded theatre. At Howard University, that theatre was packed to capacity. Jewish onslaught. He run out of town. Please went around a woman's mouth backed by volumes of contentious scholarship and a team of contentious scholars, Khalid Muhammad descended upon the university whose reputation as a centre of black learning is unrivaled. These are European guns that, that were shipped to Africa. Read about the African Holocaust. The meeting was to focus on the black Holocaust and the uncounted millions who died as slaves and under later oppression in America. American made shackles but it degenerated into a celebration of anti-Semitism. The so-called Jew Holocaust. And I say so-called Jew because he's not a real Jew. He's a Johnny-come-lately Jew who just crawled out of the caves and hills of Europe just a few days ago. The original Hebrews, uh, Moses, Abraham, were men of African descent. And their wives were African. Uh, their children were African. They grew up in African countries. Now they say you're a so-called Jew. That's what they refer to us as, the so-called Jews. At a yeshiva or religious school in Brooklyn, Norman Rosenbaum addressed the non-African children of New York Jews. And they're saying that because what they're trying to do is build up the justification to physically attack us, to dehumanise us. And you know who did that the last time? Adolf Hitler. Good evening. This is the truth hour. And don't you touch that dial. You stay tuned in to the truth hour. I'm going to lock my jaws in the backside of these no good imposter perpetrating the fraud Jews behind and the rest of these crackers behind. And you know when a bulldog bites his jaws locked. At this point, my crew and I had the misfortune to be kneeling below the stage. All of you are Holocaust victims. Every last one of you is a Holocaust victim. As we were being moved by his bodyguards, Khalid Muhammad turned his no attention good, on us. Dirty, low down bastards. And for a brief moment, we too knew what it was like to be hated. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. See ya, see ya, and I wouldn't want to be ya. You have to give these bastards hell, every last one of them, and there will come a time when we won't even allow you to come in the goddamn door. We'll run you out of here with your cameras and everything. We will run you down the streets of the cities of America. Don't walk out of here saying, it can't happen to me. Don't start saying that it can't happen to anybody in my family. Don't start saying that I'm the last person in the world it could happen to because it's already happened to him. My brother Yankel was the last person in the world it could happen to.